Hi, Ian Zepp again. Okay, so this video picks up right where the previous one left off. So we've selected all of the available price book entries. Now one of the uh, cases that we have to be aware of is that we may very well have defined a product on our list of um, product set items that isn't available for that particular price book. So again, not all products have to be mapped to a price book, especially if we're dealing with regional things here where certain products are only available in the US, for example, and not in Europe or in Asia Pacific. Um, we may have a template that defines a product that isn't present for that price book. So one of the things that we do down here is we check to see whether we've been able to locate a price book entry. And we do that just simply by trying to get from the map uh, the object that's associated to the product ID. Now if there's nothing in the map, this returns a null. And so we test for that here. So this is the block of code that executes when we have a price book and we found one. So we can add an opportunity line item. This is the block of code that executes when we don't have a price book. And so what we've done is we've predefined this um, static final string called price book entry missing. And it simply puts out in, in nice plain English the error message. The product named this with a product code of this is not available in the price book called this. And so by using these hash marks here to designate start and end blocks, we can very conveniently simply replace those with a, uh, a, a replace method call here with the appropriate product name, product code, and the price book name. And so that allows us to uh, pre-create our error messages. We could even define this in a label if we wanted to, uh, have it translated, and then it would be multilingual fairly easily. So that's how we handle the error message when a product isn't available in a price book. But in most cases, uh, we should have price books entries available. So what we do is we create a new opportunity line item. We associate in the opportunity ID with the ID of our page controller. So every uh, this visual force page is associated with a specific opportunity. And that opportunity is passed in using the ID param. And so we can go back and reference that. It's the, it's the ID of the opportunity that's associated to the controller that was passed into the constructor up at the top. We also map in our price book entry ID. This allows Salesforce to locate um, the product that's associated with this particular line item. And then we set our unit price. And we set our unit price using our discounting that has been defined at the product set item. So when we set up our product sets originally, let's go have a look at a product set. So when we set up a product set originally, we gave it a quantity and a discount. And so here is where you can see that start to come into play. So we pulled in our discount. Now internally our discounts are stored as the integer values 15. Even though this is a percentage field type, it's not stored as 0.15, it's stored as 15. So we have to do a little bit of math here to get our discount on a, uh, a decimal basis and then we just simply multi multiply the default price book unit price by the default discount to get our opportunity unit price. And then quantity is a simple matter of copying over the quantity. Now one thing we do have to be aware of is that we can set a quantity of zero. And you can use that to temporarily remove a product from being included in uh, the copying over process. So we check that up here. We say if the default quantity is zero, just go ahead and skip this product. We won't include it in the opportunity line items. And then finally, um, because we like to present things nicely, and it's sometimes you wouldn't know whether a sales price has been discounted or not because you would have to go actually look at the product and the price book to determine what the default price is. We've gone ahead and we've added a description line item in here for those cases where we do have a discount. So if the discount's greater than zero, we simply add in a brief description. And then the next few things that occur are we delete all the existing products on the opportunity and we insert the new list. So I will cover the last couple of items in the next video.